To obtain the breakaway point, we saw that we could use the friction ellipse for one Bristol. However, to be able to do that, we need to understand the load the FZ on the Bristol. We can assume that the load distribution along the contact in the longitudinal direction as a parabolic function. We make sure that the distribution sums up to the total load on the tire over the entire contact and that for one Bristol the FZ equal to the uh, load distribution times the length dx. From measurements we know that the real shape is similar to a parabolic function. We are now ready to complete the expression using the shear stress dfx and dfy and the load dfz from previous slides. We can solve for the coordinate xs where the breakaway point will occur at the boundary of the friction ellipse. We recall that this point dictates the magnitude of the adhesive force for both lateral and longitudinal directions. Now we have ex expressed the force contribution from the part of the contact patch that is in adhesion. The remaining part of the contact is sliding. In this region, the force is given by the column friction force. In other words, the load times the coefficient of friction. The first step is hence to compute the load that the sliding part of is experiencing. We know that the load distribution is assumed unaffected by what is going on in the contact. Hence, we can sum the load distribution from the trailing edge of the contact at x equals minus a up to the breakaway point in this integral. For convenience, we introduce a quantity psi, the normalized slip that range from 0 to 1. Normalized slip equal to 1 corresponds to a contact patch that is sliding without an, any adhesive part left. It should be noted that uh, the slip and the normalized slip can grow, can grow beyond this point, but the force will not. If we assume that we have a uh, coefficient of friction for sliding that is isotropic, the same in both longitudinal and lateral directions, we can formulate the direction of the force as the opposition of the motion. This can be expressed in the angle beta using a projection to get the longitudinal and lateral forces in the sliding part. The total planner uh, forces are now given by the sum of the forces from the adhesive and the sliding part of the contact patch for, for the corresponding directions. Note that these expressions are only valid if we have an adhesive part in the contact, i.e. if the normalized slip is smaller than 1. For the complete sliding situation, we can formulate the force as the coefficient of friction times the load of the tire. For convenience, we introduce the lump stiffness of the tire with respect to the slip, Cx and Cy. These are often called cornering stiffness and slip stiffness for the longitudinal and lateral directions, respectively. In vehicle dynamics, we're often interested in the torque around the z-axis. Since this torque strives to reach a zero position, it is often referred to as the self-aligning torque. This torque can be felt in, for example, the steering wheel of a car or the handlebar of a bicycle, together with other torque components originating from steering geometry. We will now focus on the torque originating from the tire and we will call this MZ. There are two basic mechanisms that generate the aligning torque. The first and the largest contributor 
is due to the non-symmetric distribution of shear force in the contact patch. If we look at the top figure and pay extra attention to the blue shape, this shape illustrates the magnitude of the shear force for the lateral direction. It builds up linearly from the leading edge and backwards. When the stress is too large, uh, we reach the breakaway point, and the stress is now determined by the load times the sliding friction coefficient. It is clear that this shape is not symmetric around the set axis, and will hence generate the torque. The second basic mechanism that generates aligning torque is that the Bristol will bend and create a lever to generate an aligning torque. This will take place both in the lateral and the longitudinal directions. We start with a non-symmetric case uh, to the left and denote this MZ prime. We can formulate the contribution of each bridge though to the torque as dMZ prime equal to the Bristol's lateral force times its lever. Observe that we don't have a corresponding contribution from the longitudinal force, as we have assumed that the tire is uniform in the lateral direction. Summing the contribution from the sliding and the adhesive part using expression derived previously gives us the lumped contribution from the contact patch. The second mechanism is the bending of the bristles that, uh, that we denote mz bis. The, contribu the contribution uh, dmz bis can be formulated as the sum of the bending in the lateral direction times the longitudinal force plus bending of the bristle in the longitudinal direction times the lateral force. The minus sign originates from the sign convention and the coordinate system. The mz bis torque can be obtained by summing the part from the adhesive and sliding parts of the contact as for the other contributions. Finally, the total aligning torque is given by the two phenomena in the adhesive and sliding parts. To the left, we can see an example of curves generated from the lateral force when we have a longitudinal slip present. It is clear that the peak of the stiction force is reduced as the longitudinal slip increases. To the right, we can see that the aligning torque contribution from the non-symmetric uh, contribution of the lateral force. It is clear that the aligning torque is re uh, reduced as the longitudinal slip is increasing. This can be understood by the fact that the longitudinal slip will move the breakaway point towards the leading edge of the tire. This implies that less torque will be generated by the adhesive part and the torque vanish completely when the entire contact is sliding. So, in this, in this lecture we have learned that we can based on some simple assumption of the contact and the interaction between the tire and the road, deduce a complete tire model that uh, when we have slip in both lateral and longitudinal directions. We have derived equations for the planar force generation as well as for the self-aligning torque of the tire. And we have seen that the interaction between the longitudinal and the lateral direction of the tire is through the breakaway point. This point dictates how large the adhesive and the sliding parts are.